If you make large charitable donations, you'll want to keep your eye out for tax changes coming down the pike next year. These changes are associated with a donation of stocks or publicly traded securities and are part of a broader update to something called the Alternative Minimum Tax System proposed in the 2023 federal budget. There's been a lot of chatter about this lately, so how do you know if you're actually affected? Nicole Ewing is Director of Tax and State Planning at TD Wealth. She joins me now to explain. Um, uh, okay, let's just, I think before we can talk about what the change is, you gotta talk about what the history is first. Right. So um, a few years ago, uh, the government put in new rules to encourage people to do donate more to charities using stocks or public securities. Yes, so the rule as it exists now is if we, um, so typically speaking, if I dispose of capital property, if I sell yeah. stocks, shares, I will have a capital gain upon which I need to include 50% of that in my, um, in my income and pay tax on that. With the donation of um, public securities, when I donate those to a, um, to a charity, I have, my inclusion rate drops from 50% to zero. Oh. So I don't need to include the value and, yeah. and that, that gain in my taxes, so I'm not paying any tax on that. In addition, I get the benefit of the full amount of that charitable tax, uh, that charitable receipt. Right. So it's not just the difference in the, uh, in the gain, it's that full amount. So it's a very powerful tool that people can use to uh, make more significant gifts than they would otherwise be able to make or really you know, maximize the gifts that they're making. And it's great for charities too, because Fantastic. again, it's, it's a great way for them to kind of you know, get money. Yeah. How common is it? I mean, is it widely used? Well, not enough. <laughs> I'll say, I mean, I still am talking to people who write checks and that you know, makes my, um, I, it, it's just not an efficient way of, of giving, but many high net worth people have been made aware that this is the appropriate strategy to do. Many charities, most charities, I would say at this point, um, are set up to be able to receive those securities in kind. So it's not a complicated process. Everybody um, wants to facilitate it to make it as easy as possible. And yes, many, uh, many people are doing this. Okay, now, um, <laughs> that's over, <laughs> to be blunt. So now there are changes uh, and it's not gonna be as attractive to donate, uh, depending on who you are. So right. give it, give, yeah. tell us what the changes are. And this so there's been a lot of discussion about it, and so I'm hoping to dispel a little bit of the panic, I think, that may have um, crept in for some people yeah. and how this is going to affect them. But, so we have what is called an alternative minimum tax, and we have that as it exists um, now, and that there's proposed changes to that. And what's changing for purposes of charitable donations of publicly traded securities is that whereas they used to not need to be included, when we calculate what our alternative minimum tax is, we are now going to need to include 30%. So what does this mean? Alternative minimum tax is a, parallel calculation of what your tax would be if you didn't use certain credits and deductions. And it's designed really to make sure that people can't, I would say not officially, it's not the right, no. but to reduce it to a point that is just not acceptable right. to, to the government. And so they've set that um, threshold in place. And so if you're in a position where you are, um, you know, making certain donations that, that you might be caught where before you might not have been. Okay. Yeah. That is clear. Um, and so the implications are you just need to know whether you're going to be um, caught yep. in this, this AMT piece. Exactly. So you need to have um, an awareness of whether these rules are going to apply to you. And I, I'd say that, you know, the, so, so the changes, we're going from a change of um, an exemption amount of $40,000 to $173,000. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be far fewer people who are going to be subject to these AMT rules. Um, but the, it has increased from 15% tax to a 20.5% tax. So those who are caught are going to be caught, um, are, are going to be paying significantly more. But you know, a lot of the discussion about this has been, um, you know, if you make 173,000, you know, caution, 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 you're going to be caught. We really don't need to be worried um, in many circumstances. There, there are circumstances where absolutely this is going to impact you and you need to be aware of it. But I would say probably for the majority of folks, you, won't. Um, you don't need to worry, whether you're making 173000 or, or not. not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's just talk about then in the, and again, this is, applies to a minority of the population. Right. To that minority, what, what do they need to be thinking about? Right, so 
And if I say, what is who's going to be caught by this? Yep. These are people who are making um, you know, large reductions in the income that they otherwise would have had. So using the lifetime capital gains exemption, for example, which is reducing the amount of income upon which you need to pay tax, making huge charitable donations um, that, again, that you're reducing your tax. If you have if you're selling a business this might be, you might be subject to this um, kind of this windfall of money. Yep. And if you're making a charitable donation at the same time, then we can, it can be, it is seen as you have reduced your income to a point that is no longer um, you know, acceptable to the government. And so if you're in that situation where your, your income is purely from dividends, or um, if you're um, you know, making a million dollars and donating 750,000. Yeah. Those are the sorts of situations that we're talking about, not the regular you know, donation yeah. that, that other folks would be making. So if you're, if you're earning employment income, business income, um, if that's your source of income, yeah. these, you're not, this is not going to be, this is not you yeah. who, who's being targeted. Which is, is good. So people can breathe a sigh of relief yes. when they hear that too. Yeah. However, I will say that if they think that it is going to apply to them, they yeah. should talk to somebody. It's always weak because this, there's complexity to oh, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you have to. You, yeah. you really do. If you are, I mean, hopefully if you're involved in any of those sorts of things that I talked about, you're already getting that tax advice. Yeah. But it's particularly important in this instance because you do have the opportunity to recover the tax that you pay. So if you have been, if you've paid that alternative minimum tax, you have seven years to collect it back, but you need to have income in order to do that. And so we see with business owners, for example, they have their one big moment where they're selling the business. They might be subject to this and need to pay tax, um, the alternative minimum tax, and yet not have income for the next number of years to, to be able to recover it. So yeah. this is, it's really important to do some of that planning, to think about what that cash flow and income sources are going to be in the future years so that you can recover some of that that tax that has been paid. Otherwise, it's, it is potentially you're you know, out of pocket and won't have an opportunity to uh, to get that back. So. so if you have any of those major things that you're talking about, like, you know, one-time events where, you know, you mentioned the business selling off or major donations that are mm -hmm. going in place, that's really the time that, and again, you're probably already talking to somebody, we hope, at this point. We hope so. We hope yeah. so. And at the table, you would want to have your financial advisor, investment advisor, lawyer, accountant, everybody there who can help maybe structure the, the deal in a particular way that doesn't give rise to some of these concerns, that can advise you and your family on the lifetime capital gains exemption and what that means um, for this calculation. So they can hopefully help you navigate some of these uh, challenges and put in place a plan so that you're not finding yourself you know, out of pocket. These, these are really rules that are intended to make sure that, again, people aren't reducing income using credits and deductions to a point um, where they're paying very minimal tax. We want, the government wants them to pay at least 20.5% yeah. to sort of the, the number. Um, and so we have to make sure that, um, that we know what those, th those rules are going to be and how we're going to be impacted. Thank you for clarifying that. My pleasure. That is Nicole Ewing, Director of Tax Estate Planning at TD Wealth. Coming up, Greg Bennell from Money Talk Live is back to give us the highlights from the week, including a promising development in cancer-fighting drugs. You're watching Money Talk. We'll be right back.